I'm pretty happy with that. That was a <laughs> that was a uh, that was a challenge. I gotta admit. Welcome back, folks, to Random Rod Shop. Last time we were trying to get our little power hammer working, but. As it turns out, the, the, the bead we were trying to make was a little taller than the working stroke, if you will, of the air hammer. So, plan B was <laughs> we kind of need to, need to get that fixed. So, what I've come up with, and I'll get the, I'll get the camera a little bit closer here. So, what I've come up with is this upper arm that was fixed, right? The last time you saw this, this arm was fixed and that was the problem. The air hammer needed to come up so high to clear the, the size of that bead that once the bead started being made, the hammer, air hammer anvil kind of fell away from the, from the air hammer itself. So what we needed was the air hammer to adjust down as the bead was made. So what I did was I put a, I made a new arm. I could have used the other arm, but I made a new arm. Put a pivot back here on the back of the arm. And now as the bead is developed, the air hammer moves down to keep the, to keep the anvil engaged with the hammer. You can see I've added some weights on here. Uh, 30 if I did my math right. Did I do my math right? Let's see, five, ten, yeah. I was headed about this on, let me put it back up on the, let me put it back on the stand here. I was headed down the solution here and a little different. I was gonna, I was gonna put a cylinder in a cylinder here and slide this and one of the subscribers pointed out that I was overcomplicating it. <laughs> so he suggested just pivot the thing and let's go. And so I want to give a call out to L Roman 3861. I appreciate that. This is a lot simpler than what I had in mind. So at this point, I have tested it just to make sure that the new version, <laughs> version 2.0, was going to do what I needed to do. Now, so what I learned was I didn't make the panel big enough. I was afraid to make the panel too big because the bigger the panel, the more metal you got to move to shrink it all up in where it needs to go. But obviously I need to make this side a little wider and it wouldn't hurt to make the ends a little bit longer here. Now this, I'm kind of going back and forth on. Let me, let me show you exactly what that is. So up here you see the full bead. On the bottom side, there's not much of a bead there, right? You've got the step here, but the bead kind of stops like a quarter of an inch in, which relative to this side means the bead stops about right there. I'm not sure what the right way to do that. That's probably the best way to say that. I cut out a new uh, blank panel, and I'm going to go ahead and go about hammering this in as a full bead and then whacking it off. That seems to be the cleanest way to get the curves coming into that bottom. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. So I've got a new panel cut out and I sure ain't gonna make, this is not a, this is not a fast process. This is not a, this is not a, not a real powerful hammer. So this is not a fast process. This isn't a big powerful hammer. It does the job. Right. It will bend this 18 gauge into a pretty sizable bead. Um, it just takes a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and film it, but when you guys see it, I'll probably put it you know, 400 times speed on this thing to, uh, <laughs> so you don't have to watch it. All right, I'm going to get this marked out. This was the pattern I'd used or I'd made to you know, with the thought I was gonna do a hammer form. So I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna draw a line that's about a half inch bigger all the way around. 
because that's what it works out to be on the, on the bead. Get this marked out. Then I'm gonna start running around. Oh, one last thing. The thing I did discover, I thought there would be quite a bit of wiggle room, you know, given it didn't move very much metal at one time. But I definitely learned the first pass around, you wanna be on the line. Cause once it gets a little bit of a bend in it, right, in the forming of the bead, it's kinda of tough to make, it, to make it change directions. That surprised me, given it doesn't bend it very much first, so. Anyway, if you do something like this, stay on the line the first time. All right, let me get this drawn out and I'll turn you back on once I get started making a lot of noise. All right. Okay, so, hey, you can see, let me, uh, let me raise that up. So, I don't know if you can tell, let me see here. Let's see a good place to get it. So, it's a, oh, I don't know, something a little less than a quarter of an inch. It just takes a long time, relatively speaking. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go ahead and go around this another, <laughs> I don't know, 20 or 30 times. And <laughs> once, I get it, once I get it all beat out, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it because I'm still unclear how this thing's gonna stretch the corners and what we're gonna have to do to clean this up. You know, if you think about it, I'm pulling a lot of material in to the center here, which means there's too much material on these edges. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in a shrinker. I don't, I've got one of those little bitty Harbor Freight shrinkers, so I don't know. At this point, I'm not gonna warn any brace cells on it. Let me, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna come back to you once I, 
went around a few times and I get this thing closer to a half inch where it needs to be. All right, I'll get back to you. if I quite got the half inch or not but it's pretty close and obviously it's stiff I think it'll do its job I think the trick is <laughs> when it's all said and done get it did it did I uh, get it close to the same size with all this stretching and pulling uh, this is a uh, this is a challenging panel to make now priority probably comes into uh, my lack of experience in this field. Let's see here. Well, that ain't bad. It looks like it's gonna fit pretty close. Now, you know, we're gonna have to get it, see if we can get it a little flatter than that. <laughs> but I think that will, that will work. I think I'm going to drag my table around here and throw this rusty ass inner fender on here and start trimming this thing and trying to figure out what it's going to take to get this slightly bit piece of metal back in that inner fender. <laughs> Let me get set up. Now, <laughs> okay, I'm set up. And uh, this is the second go around. I've already uh, talked through this and drew my lines on this thing. And I was uh, getting ready to put it on standby cause I, so I could rearrange stuff. And then I noticed it was on standby, so I didn't film it. So we're gonna go through it again. And I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna walk you through what I, what I think I did. So here we go. So I'd like to put this bend on. I think that would straighten up the panel, stiffen up the panel. The trick is deciding where to put the bend because this bend isn't parallel to this top edge. It's kind of on an angle there. I think you can see that. Can you see that? Maybe not. I think you can, maybe we can see it now. So this bend isn't parallel to this feature right here, this bead. So I can't just measure off this and get it. So what I'm gonna attempt to do, or what do I attempt to do? <laughs> is I'm gonna assume this is straight. It looks pretty straight. I'm gonna put that up here. And the goal is to try to get the angle. So I set that up there. And I put a mark on it here and put a mark on it here. And then the trick is to figure out where the bend needs to actually be. So I don't know if you can see that. I took, I drew a line from the, from the marks. So I drew a line across there. And it looks like that it looks like that I need to be about, I think it was a half inch. What is it? No, ah, three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch from the center line of the bead to the closest that line gets to the bead. And as near as I can tell, it's about right there. So I set my, set my uh, dividers up 
and I clamped, clamped the ruler on the old line, and set the dividers up to what I think is the right distance, and I scribed another line. This is where I discovered that the camera was on standby, and so we'll take it live from here. <laughs> so we're gonna try to bend that. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the bender. Yeah, I think I talked about it in one of the earlier videos, but I don't think we've, I've ever actually shown using it. So what we got going on here is I've got an old grater blade. It's interesting. The, uh, I don't know much about graters, but apparently there is a class of graters. Um, don't know what brand that only uses one side of the grater blade, which I think is interesting. And it, it only, you can't flip it around because the holes aren't symmetric. Seems like a waste to me, but anyway, I got a pile of these grater blades that I bought at a county auction. One side is just completely wore out, but the other side's brand new. Anyway, I've got it set up here. It's basically scrap steel, the way we do everything, just a pile of scrap steel. I've got a piece of half inch plate that I put on a hinge and I had to weld it together and <laughs> looks like I had one, two, three, I had four pieces of steel. So we had to weld it together. Got the tensioning bolts go down on the sides. Now, after using this a little bit, I've di discovered that maybe I should have redesigned, I should have designed this just a tad different because I, currently I have all of the tensioning hardware pretty much welded in place. You know, it, the, this hinges around and the screw goes in, but all of the threading and everything, it's fixed. What that does is, or what that doesn't do, is allow me to put a piece of pipe between the bed and the, uh, uh, I forgot what this is called. <laughs> How about we call it the hold down? <laughs> I can't put a piece of pipe between the bed and the hold down um, to bend a larger radius. So I think what I should have done is put the, put the bottom, bottom nut on a swivel so that I could, I could get more room, if you will. Because it's all welded solid, I can only raise it up just a little bit. And I actually have a, I have a little foot, foot, foot pedal over here to help me raise it up. So for what I was doing at the time, it served its purpose, but as the more I use it and as we go along, we need to modify it. <laughs> kind of the way things work around here. So, ah, this is stressful. <laughs> if I didn't get this wrong, we're gonna have to straighten out this stinking bend and we're gonna have to start over because I sure don't want to beat that in there again. I really like this little hammer and it, I think it's going to be fantastic, but it's not a big hammer. And this is a, this is a lot of work. I think uh, if I do this again, I think we're going to figure out how to put some planishing dies on that hammer. Cause you really need to, you need to stretch this a bunch. Right, because it's trying to pull in the sides and it doesn't want to pull in the sides. This area needs to be stretched a lot. And I've got a little English wheel, but I, I don't know about, I think we just need to beat the living shit out of it, right? With a planishing hammer and raise it up. And then when we put the, put the dies back in there, I think it'll work pretty good. That's what I think anyway, I don't know. But if we have to do this again, we're gonna come up with a way to stretch the metal. All right, let's see if we can get this in here. You 
You know, it'd be great if I make sure I don't bend this the wrong way. Well, I let that slip. I've got this nut just tight enough to put a slight bow in the bottom of this thing. So when you tighten it down, it can put a hurting on the metal. Well, here goes nothing. It's a relatively sharp bend. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's not too bad. Looks like I kind of overbent it a little bit, but we can straighten that out. Let's see how it fits. <laughs> you know, this is one of those things you're just, just, just almost afraid to look. You know what? Well, that makes me pretty stinking happy because I think that might actually work. All right. Let's see if we can get a hammer after this thing and see if we can straighten it out. I'd prefer to have it fit pretty well before I cut anything out of this thing. So let me get, I'll move this aside. I'll drag my normal little bench over here. And we'll see if we can straighten this thing out. Holy shit, I'm happy. <laughs> that, was a, that was a lot of work. <sighs> yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty happy. <laughs>
Okay, well, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing untwisted. About this top edge because we're gonna have to cut most of that off because right. it looks like only about 30% of that bead is actually going to show up on there well, looks like we've got just a little bit more to go pretty good it ain't perfect but it's pretty close that's not bad okay so I need to decide where I'm gonna cut this off All right, well, it looks like, other than where that overlap was, looks like I've got some good metal.
All right, we need to see if we can get this trimmed down so that so we can uh, use Fitzy's cutting butt. Wish I'd made that a little bit longer. I don't have to think about that. I still don't want to cut that out until this is ready to go in. I guess we'll figure we'll figure out what we need to fix after we get this a little closer. I'm going to get the wheel of death out. I, let me get back to you after I cut this thing off. All right, well, that wasn't bad. And I wish I'd made that longer. I think we're going to cut the lip out anyway, because in the end, we need to get this all the way down to where it needs to go before we do any, any real marking and cutting. All right, I'm going to cut that out. I thought these inner fenders were thicker, but I'm beginning to think these things are made out of 20 gauge. Looks like I didn't get that all cut out there. Oh my, I missed that by a mile. occurred to me I need to mark the holes on the back for where the hood hinges bolt or I'm about to lose track of it. All right well I think I'm gonna tack that in and we're gonna start cutting it. You can see my doggies are abused. They get treats for everything. <laughs> okay, well, I think we can tack that in there. I'm gonna shut you off because I gotta get the welder kind of where the camera's sitting. I need to rearrange stuff. So let me get back when I get everything set back up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Forgot to put the mic on. I wonder how that's going to come out in the editing. <laughs> All right, so you can kind of see what's going on there. I need to cut most of that bead off that we put in there. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld this thing all in solid and get it all trimmed up. And we'll come back, we'll come back and cut this. We'll come back and cut this bead kind of right along the left edge of that light. Well, that ain't going to work. How about this? We're going to come, we're going to, we're going to weld it all back in, I think. We'll finish, 
Well, at least get it, get it first pass. Probably still gonna have to grind it and fill out some, fill out some holes. But I think, I think we're gonna cut this bead off. Maybe start with halfway down the bead, so that we can see what we're gonna have to do to roll this thing up. All right, well, that's probably enough fuzzy camera and bad lighting. Let me go ahead and get this welded up. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and, I think I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of it so we can actually see what we're gonna, see what we can do. All right, I'll get back to you in a minute. All right. Well, actually, it looks like we got pretty close where we need to cut it. It looks like when I welded this in, it drew this, drew this inner fender just a little bit because I got some oil canning going on there. Not gonna worry about that right now. I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to, wasn't gonna have to put a piece in here, but it looks like I need to cut this out and put a piece in there. So. I need to clean the bench off again, move my brake back up, put my slicer back, you know, the, the big cutter back up there so I can cut me a little strip of metal so we can cut and butt it back, cut and butt it in here. The good news is, the good news is I think that's gonna look pretty good. I think that's gonna look real good actually when it's all done. I'm happy about that. Our little, our little hammer did its job. Okay, I'm gonna shut you off. I'm gonna clean up and get my little sheet metal cutter put back up there and cut a piece. Well, it's amazing how the day flies when you're having fun. Actually, the weekend flies while you're having fun. I am out of time. But we got the, we got that hood hinge area replaced. Now I've got some more, I gotta, I'm gonna have to do some more cleaning on this side. Ah. And keep in mind that I'm not gonna do much more cleaning. I just wanted to make sure it was all smooth here because there is a, there is a plate, right? This. This side is doubled up, so there will be a, uh, an eighth inch overlay that goes on top of this. So I'm not gonna clean this up much more. I got some more cleaning on the front side, but I'm pretty happy with that. That was a, <laughs> that was a, uh, that was a challenge, I gotta admit. Now, I was hoping to get this done so we could actually get this thing bolted on, but this shouldn't take too much time. This is just, you know, waterfall waves. This, this is pretty straightforward. So I guess next weekend when I get the chance to work on this again, maybe then we will get the inner fender put in and I can finally mount Let's see, the air cleaner and the radiator fill bottle and the computer and the fuse box. Seems like there's something else on this side. What else is on this side? One, two, three. I guess that's it. Computer, fuse, oh, battery. Ah, I knew there was something else on the driver's side. So we got the battery, the computer, and the fuse box on the driver's side, and we got the air cleaner, and we got the radiator fill bottle on the passenger side. Well, I'm disappointed we didn't get further, but I am really happy that this actually fit, given the amount of the amount of times I beat that with a hammer, you know, that little uh, that little hammer, and I can't say enough good things about that that little hammer the uh, this little power hammer that thing that thing does a trick i think if we give it something reasonable i think it will do a fantastic job i mean in the end it went ahead and it beat this bead in 
which I wouldn't expect it to do very well, and it didn't do very well. But I think we get down the road and uh, get some planishing hammers for it, or, or planishing dies for it, and I am pretty sure I can get some shrinking dies to fit in there. That's what I'm kind of hoping for, so we could do some smaller shrink, shrinking and stretching panels on this thing here. The gun didn't, I ended up hooking the big compressor on because the little one was just running all the time, but I put the big compressor on and it's not a, I mean, it's a, you know, a Napa thing. It's not a big commercial air compressor, but it would shut off, right? I'd, I'd run the air hammer continuously, but the compressor could keep up with it. I was pretty happy with that. I think that's it for this one. So subscribe. Share the videos with your friends, hit the notification bell, make a comment. Um, until next time, <laughs> I think it's time to go in and get something to eat.